and increasingly, the most wild and creative music and pop culture in the world. Leading the charge for Japanese culture overseas has been the phenomenal rise of baby metal. Three teen girls behind the huge viral video Gimme Chocolate, who are about to bring their completely unique fusion of metal and J-pop to a sold out Wembley. I want to investigate how a band like Baby Metal can become so big in the UK. Tracing their story and influences from Wembley to Tokyo. We'll be delving into the Japanese rock scene, going fashion shopping on the streets of Harajuku, meeting some of the biggest J-pop stars in the world, and sampling the Tokyo nightlife along the way. All in an effort to understand how a sound and culture so different can have such an impact 6,000 miles from home. First, I'm meeting up with Baby Metal just a few days ahead of the biggest show of their lives outside Japan. Two metal, this. Yay metal, this. More metal, this. We are Baby Metal. So, could you start off by introducing yourselves? Who are Baby Metal, and what are you about? Oh, uh, we're a fusion of idol and no cute and metal. Cute is a uh, kawaii. Uh, it's Japanese. Uh, we're newborn genre. It's baby metal. You guys are just about to play Wembley. It's one of the biggest arenas in the UK. You're the first Japanese band to ever headline Wembley, and you've nearly sold it out. What does that feel like? So, this ne, imada ni Wembley ni tatsu te yu jikan ga waite nakute. Honto ni kaigai no ma arena klasu no live wa hajimete na no de. Yappari. 緊張するし不安な気持ちもあるんですけど、それよりも楽しみな気持ちが大きくて、今回は日本人初だったりとか、あと若い人でウェンブリーのステージに立ってる人は珍しいっていう話を聞いたので、だったら自分たちにしかでき
I don't think I properly have the words to describe what I just saw. It was like being bashed around in a pinball machine for an hour. I mean, it was a full-on assault on the senses. It was a mosh pit, circle pits, light show, pyrotechnics, outfit changes, choreographed dance moves. I feel like the next logical step is to go to Japan and find out a little bit more about the culture and influence that's behind what we just saw. I think next stop is Tokyo. I've just touched down in Tokyo and I'm on the way to meet a local illustrator to find out about some of the incredible styles and fashion influences key to baby metal and Japanese pop culture. Bunny Bisu, artist and illustrator. Hey, how are you? All right, how's it going? So, you're going to teach me about Japanese style and Japanese fashion. Where are we? We're in Harajuku and we're on Takeshita Dori or Takeshita Street, the center, the heartbeat of kawaii culture, kawaii fashion, and kind of youth subcultures, youth fashion. Now, the word kawaii I've heard banded about quite a lot. I've been pretending like I know what it means. I think I kind of get it, but what is it? Okay, simply kawaii is cute, but it doesn't just extend to just how we might want to use that word in English to just say that baby is cute or something. Like in Japan, everything can be cute, anything can be cute. Cute can be a subculture, a fashion style, a type of music, a type of way to wear your hair. And this gets thrown around everywhere and used by everybody. Your style is pretty awesome. Uh, how would you describe it? I'm not really sure today. <laughs> well, twin tails, they call bunches of twin tails in Japan. They're two tails. This is kind of, I guess, the trademark kawaii thing. I kind of like wearing it, so that's my kawaii trademark for today. But my style varies every day. It could be rockabilly one day and punk the next day and something really cute and I don't know. I like to just mix it all up. That's why I like Harajuku so much. Bunny, I feel like you brought me to the inside of some candy floss. Where are we? Okay, we're inside Closet Child, which is a Lolita store. Um, it's all the popular Lolita fashion brands. Now, Lolita is the kind of, as you can see, kind of frilly, cute style. And for the people who like this, for some people, it's more than just fashion. It's a whole lifestyle, maybe dressing like this every single day. I think the mis misconception from people overseas is maybe it's a costume. So maybe it's a sexy costume. To wear frilly things, it's kind of bedroom sexy clothes but if anything it's the opposite the women who wear lolita they don't dress this way for men like not at all they dress this way because this is what they want to wear they want to wear like the most pink the most cute outfit and they have total control over how much they're showing or not showing it doesn't feel very baby metal-esque ah that's because the floor we're on is mostly sweet lolita and elegant lolita baby metal is gothic lolita okay where's that Upstairs. Oh, of course. All right, let's do that then. Uh, okay, this seems a little bit more like it. Yeah, so now we're on the, the Gothic Lolita, Punk Lolita uh, floor. So there's a lot more black up here. So things like this maybe looks like some of their stage costumes. And we've got, well, maybe like dresses like this in red and black, a little more dark and edgy than the sweet stuff we're seeing downstairs. You came to Harajuku and you're wanting to find something to kind of replicate baby metal style or maybe you want to go to the concert, then something like this is going to be pretty good. Fashion's one thing, but what about the music influences behind baby metal? I think I know just the place to boost my J-pop game. This is the world famous Tower Records right in the heart of Tokyo. And I've been told this is the place to come to discover new music and also learn a lot more about Japanese music as well. So I'm going to have a little look around and uh, see what I find. So I've only been in here like a couple of minutes. I'm already quite confused and a little bit lost. I think the section that I'm in right now is like anime bands. It just sort of mixes, from what I've seen on the screen anyway, a little bit of a story, but then they sort of break out into song. 
And then if you enjoy it, you can buy the album afterwards as well. All right, OK. It's the baby metal display. Got quite a lot of baby metal around Tower Records. You get the feeling that they're really, really proud of their success and they want to just show them off. This is awesome. So uh, we're on the J-pop floor now. I think this is one of those Japanese idol bands. Maybe in the West it might be usual to have four or five members in a band. In Japan, nine members. I'm heading to Akihabara to speak to somebody who can hopefully explain the J-pop and idol scene behind baby metal that little bit better. Patrick St. Michel, music journalist. Idol culture, what's it all about? Well, right now we are in Akihabara, which is the center of idol culture in Japan. Idol culture is sort of a subset of Japanese pop music that's been around since the early 70s. It's groups of young women and sometimes men who perform really peppy pop songs. The key with idol culture is it's about creating a close relationship with the fans. The biggest idol group at the moment is AKB48, uh, who perform nightly at a theater kind of over there. It stands for Akihabara 48, because originally the group had 48 members in total. Since then, it has expanded significantly, and I believe today, last time I checked, there's 140. AKB48 has a very famous motto that is, idols that you can meet. So they'll hold events sort of in the streets here in Akihabara. There's handshake events, photo opportunities. Uh, there's a cafe here in Akihabara devoted to AKB48 with its own AKB48 store. Every June, they have the AKB48 general election where if you buy the latest CD single, you get a ballot and you fill it out with who you think, or who your favorite performer in the group is and whoever has the most votes ends up the number one girl. A pop group with a sort of presidential election aspect thrown in as well. Very much so, yeah. So the idol scene sounds quite fun, open to everybody. People seem really into it. Is there not a darker, more controversial side to it? Oh, there's definitely a more controversial side to it. With a group like AKB48 especially, a lot of sort of middle-aged men are drawn to them. Some would say it can get a bit seedy. Uh, many, both here in Japan and outside of the country, have made that point. I've talked to a few idol fans who are like maybe in their mid-30s, and they've framed it to me as they view the performers as like their sisters, their little sisters, and they feel like they're supporting them. So what influence does idol culture and bands have on other types of Japanese music? In industry terms, it inspired a lot of music labels to start their own idol groups and trying to focus on niche fandoms. So for example, uh, baby metal was created as a way to sort of reach metal fans who might not go for AKB48's brand of music. And then there have also been artists who've kind of seemed like they've gained popularity as sort of a alternative to idol culture. Uh, in recent years, one of those would be Kyari Pamyu Pamyu. She was formerly a model in Harajuku who then became a pop star. She went viral on YouTube and she has attracted a lot of fans in Europe and North America and a lot of celebrities have also been drawn to her. She's really left a mark on non-Japanese listeners. Hi. So nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice Please have a seat. Many people will consider you the queen of J-pop, one of the most recognizable J-pop artists outside of Japan. What's the secret? Mm ハラジュクカルチャーをとっても大事にしていて、私も大好きな街なんですけれども、なんかこう
あのアニメとかアイドル文化がすごくあるんですけれどもなんかそういうポップカルチャーっていうのが私の知ってる限りはあんまりアイコンの人がいなかったのでそういう存在になれたらいいなと思って、まあ、いろんな色を使ったりあのいろんな面白いことをやったりしています。How did it feel to have people like Katy Perry and Lady Gaga say that you were an influence on them? Ah, Katy, ah, you were at the time? Yeah, I'm going to be a good one. 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 I'm g o i n g to be a good one. I'm going to be a good one. I'm going to be a g o 私のことをすごくいいって言ってくれたのは本当に夢みたいだしなんか信じられなかったですね。I feel like I've learned so much about Japanese pop music, but as far as baby metal goes, that's just one side of the coin. I'm heading to one of Tokyo's most famous rock venues to explore the Japanese rock scene with one of its most successful exports. Ken, get up. We are crossfade. So, we're in a grimy dressing room of、uh, a really cool venue、mm-hmm. at the moment. What can you tell me about this place? So, we are in a liquor room. Uh, in Tokyo,、uh, like every single band, every single artist like, came from the, the outside of Japan is、uh, playing here. In Macedon, Jamaica, yeah, mellow music, <laughs> Jamaica, yeah, Jamaica, <laughs> and like so many, like a lot of bands. I love this venue. What can you tell me about today's rock scene in Japan? When we started the band, there wasn't like any band playing out of Japan. Yeah. Since then,、uh, like Cold Rain. Like、uh, One Lucky Rock as well,、mm. and like, like a lot of them like trying to get outside of Japan. And now、uh, I think like much easier、uh, for Japanese band to get outside of Japan. Definitely it's getting bigger and better. Now we are ready to you know, conquer the world. <laughs> So, bands like yourself and Baby Metal are picking up all these fans over in the UK. You guys just did a UK headline tour. Why do you think this is? Like, Japanese band is like totally different from the Western bands. And、uh, like, our style and our humanity are Japanese, like, little item. And the UK as well, right? Like, we don't be afraid to like mixing like the jungle music and like style. Like, see, like, Baby Metal, like, they mix like Metal music and、uh, like kawaii stuff, you know what I mean? Like the Japanese, like otaku stuff. And、uh, we sing in English, but at the same time, like we put like electronic stuff、uh, with the heavy music. We mix them out. So, like, that's the reason why、uh, we like Japanese bands like getting popular in the UK, I think. I'm here at the Nico Nico building, which I've been told is Japan's equivalent of YouTube. I'm here to check out a launch show for a new single from a band that epitomizes the crazy mashup of influences and styles that we've come to learn about in Japanese music. I've no idea what to expect. I know it's going to be fun though, so let's get inside and check it out. Pop, step, jump, Awesome. The power of the girls and the Lady Beard have on stage is amazing. And everybody just getting into it, head banging, dancing, jumping around, screaming, shouting. The fans were extremely good today. Lady Baby! 
concerts here in Japan are much different from America. The dedication is just extreme here. There he is, bro. <laughs> so I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Good to see you, my man. Lady B, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, sir. How you going? Uh, first question. I heard you used to be a wrestler. That's right. I actually still am a wrestler. So I do this and I wrestle parallel with one another. I think I'd have a hard time summing you guys up. Could you describe your sound and style, please? Ah, uh, well, the name of the uh, style of music that we have is called Kawaii Death. So Kawaii be the Japanese word for cute, of course, and death being death. So uh, the style is a combination of everything beautiful and lovely and sweet and delightful in life, combined with everything powerful, destructive and abrasive in life, coming together in a perfect uh, unison and harmony. A bearded man with gorgeous hair. Thank you. Sometimes dresses as a maid, sometimes as Chung Lee, mm. who sings metal songs crossed with J-pop mm. with two girls. Mm. Might be a little bit of a hard sell in some <laughs> other countries like the UK or in your home country of Australia. Yeah. In Japan, totally works. No, Why is no this? problem. Um, you know, that's a that's a wonderful question. It's a question that actually I can't answer as a because I'm not Japanese, you know, all I can, you know, do is kind of speculate. Um, at the end of the day, all we can really say is it's unlike any other place on Earth. Any other place on Earth. The value system is different, the social structure is different, um, and that means that the creations are different. Now, I very much enjoyed the show. Definitely want to hang out with you a little bit more. Yeah. It's my last night in Japan, oh, so... Uh, no. Where should we go? Where can I go to really experience Japan? Where should you well, take me? I mean, what do you reckon? I mean, uh, karaoke is a fairly Japanese thing. How do you feel about karaoke? You fancy a sing? Who doesn't like karaoke? Let's do it. Let's do it, bro. All right. All right. Let's get it on. Come this way, sir. <laughs> my fire, my one desire. You are. You are. You are. I feel like getting the brother tonight. Well, I've come to the end of my time here in Japan. I really don't want to go home. I love the city. Just had a bit of a mad night out with Lady Bib. I've learned loads about Japanese music and culture and fashion and all the ingredients that go into making a band like Baby Metal. In fact, Baby Metal sort of personifies, in my opinion, all the things that are great about Tokyo. This crazy mashup of genres and influences and really passionate fans. And at the end of my journey, I've realized this is a band that could only ever come from one place in the world, and that's Japan.